Welcome to Book Summaries. Dear friends, it's time to break free from the cycle of debt. Five rules to help you escape poverty. Have you ever felt trapped in the whirlpool of debt, stressed about money, and unable to see a way out? Have you wondered why all your efforts seem to lead to failure and poverty? In today's video, we will share with you five rules to completely change your financial mindset. You will discover how the wealthy think and act, and how to apply these secrets to escape poverty, achieve financial freedom, and live the life you've always dreamed of. This isn't just theory. These are practical methods proven to be effective. Get ready to change your life today. Before we dive into the content, please like, subscribe to our channel, and share to support us. Thank you so much. Changing one's mindset can lead to becoming a billionaire. One billionaire once said, In the first 25 years of my life, I always thought like a poor person, and as a result, I lived in poverty. But once I changed my mindset, wealth began pouring into my life. It might sound exaggerated, but simply changing how you think can make you a billionaire. So, how did this person think during those initial 25 years, and how did his thinking change? The answer to these questions lies in Steve Siebold's book, How Rich People Think. This opening statement belongs to him. Steve Siebold, a former professional athlete and national coach, later became a renowned speaker on personal development. From a young age, he was determined to escape poverty and acquire wealth, no longer wanting to live in scarcity. With this ambition, over the next 26 years, he traveled the world, interviewing top entrepreneurs and billionaires, comparing their mindsets with those of the middle class in America. Ultimately, he concluded that the difference between the middle class and the wealthy lies not in background or opportunities but in perspective and mindset. In this book, Steve Siebold explores 100 topics to illustrate the differences in thinking between ordinary people and the wealthy, which ultimately shape their entirely different lives. I have summarized these 100 topics into five main points, covering aspects of life, work, education, entertainment, and more. After watching this video, you can recap and consider the differences between the middle class and the wealthy. Perhaps you will find inspiration and guidance to gradually become wealthy and step-by-step -step escape poverty. Allow yourself to become wealthy gradually, step-by-step, -step, and escape poverty. Lesson 1. Working longer hours can potentially earn more money. Most people believe that wealth is directly proportional to time and effort invested, in other words, using time to earn money. Since childhood, we've been taught that effort equals reward, a fundamental law of life. Especially previous generations often remind us that hard work is necessary to earn money. This mindset subtly infiltrates our thinking, shaping our belief that earning money through labor is correct. We view diligent work as an honorable achievement and accept that doing undesirable jobs for money is normal. Conversely, the wealthy focus solely on whether they can make money and are passionate about their current work. They love what they do and constantly seek ways to enrich themselves from it. The affluent know how to leverage advanced thinking to accumulate wealth. They believe more good ideas lead to more money. Success is their most important badge of honor. Wealthy people work hard and invest time in their work but not in the traditional sense of toil. Instead, they maximize their advantages and talents, strategically working to achieve the highest profits. Rather than counting hours worked each day, they concentrate on tasks that provide the highest value, avoiding wasting time and energy on trivial matters. Meanwhile, Ordinary people often disperse their energy and creativity across multiple goals and projects, along with various hobbies. They attempt to multitask but often fail to achieve significant results in anything. In contrast, 
Wealthy individuals concentrate their entire dedication on a single pursuit. They set specific goals, establish clear plans, and persistently pursue them to fruition. This approach not only leads to success but also creates sustainable and enduring value. A significant difference between the wealthy and the ordinary lies in their perception of time and work. The wealthy view time as their most valuable asset and constantly seek to optimize it. They don't work just for the sake of working but to achieve greater goals, utilizing every second and minute to generate value and profit instead of wasting it on unnecessary tasks. Additionally, the wealthy understand that success requires not only diligence but also intelligence and strategy. They continuously seek to learn, enhance their knowledge and skills, and apply them to their work. They recognize that only through continual self-improvement can they maintain and increase their wealth. The wealthy think and act differently from ordinary people. They not only work hard but also know how to maximize their opportunities and advantages. They focus on what truly matters, avoiding wasting time and effort on unnecessary pursuits. This approach enables them to achieve not only financial wealth but also live a meaningful and proud life. Lesson number two. Saving is more important, or earning money is more important. Normal people always try to protect their savings, worrying that if they spend all their money, there will be nothing left. In contrast, the wealthy only care about earning more money and using business thinking to create assets. Do you realize that when most people focus on saving, it's actually a negative mindset? Change your thinking, focus on earning more money, find ways to make money work for you, and you will see the difference. Because after the effort to save comes fear, they fear losing what they currently have. They think earning money is very difficult, and because they fear failure, they dare not move forward, even giving up on the idea of making money to only focus on protecting their savings. This restricts their vision, only seeing what's immediately in front of them without grasping the whole picture. They miss out on opportunities beyond the current circle when filled with such negative thoughts. Wealthy individuals believe in abundant money-making opportunities and trust in their ability to earn. They consistently take positive actions, persisting even through setbacks, knowing that daring to take risks and experiment will eventually lead to success. They understand that money is merely a tool for exchange. Creative ideas are the true scarce resource. The author also reminds us that those who merely save and scrimp, afraid to invest, easily overlook significant earning potentials. Conversely, the wealthy, even during financial crises, remain unrestricted in their thinking, focusing all their energy on plans for substantial earnings. Lesson number three, earning money through formal education or special skills varies widely when it comes to discretionary spending. Steve Siebold points out that the middle class, relying on formal education, meaning traditional schooling, believes what is taught in school is correct and should be followed. They pass on their views and money to their children, teaching them to be content with the present and how to survive. Even though the wealthy value formal education, they often do not link it to wealth creation. They teach their children how to accumulate wealth, unconstrained by traditional frameworks, through non-traditional thinking to generate innovative ideas tirelessly. Surely everyone knows Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. For a long time, he has opposed the school education system, believing it to be outdated since the Industrial Revolution and never changing. Previously, schools were established to standardize students' life skills, such as technical work and machine operation in factories and other specialized jobs, rather than teaching students how to make money. Simply put, the school education system is designed, according to Kiyosaki, to produce poor people. 
Annual studies show that those with the most stable incomes are not necessarily those with the highest education backgrounds, but those who know how to leverage special skills to create assets and value for themselves. The school education system, as per his view, is designed to produce the working class, who pay the most taxes and contribute to the country's wealth. Naturally, governments seek to foster more such individuals for national prosperity. The wealthy teach their children to courageously pursue their dreams. They educate them on how to invest and spend money wisely, instilling the belief in limitless financial possibilities, a belief in trusting their own abilities and intelligence to achieve anything they desire. They emphasize that academic credentials, IQ scores, or academic achievements are not pivotal. Instead, they believe they possess the means to become wealthy. Rich individuals tell their children that wealth does not make one perfect, but it opens doors to opportunities that others may not have. Lesson number four, wealth and poverty, which are the sources of all sins. Many people complain that, despite their best efforts, they still cannot earn enough money, even worrying about daily meals. They do not realize that, outwardly, they desire to become wealthy, but subconsciously, they harbor negative thoughts about money. Have you ever heard the saying, wealth is the source of all sins? Some even believe that money is a devil, making people greedy, selfish, and cold-hearted. Older people in families often teach children this, and television shows often depict this as well, those with money become wicked. But is this really true? We must understand that consciousness can spread and strongly influence our actions. When we harbor hidden negative thoughts, they will limit our actions without our knowledge. Without action, how can there be results? The wealthy do not see wealth as wicked because they understand that money is just a tool, a measure of a person's value. If someone becomes bad with money, it's a personal issue. Money is simply a tool. Bad people will use money in bad ways, good people in good ways. Money can harm, but it can also save. Consider this, in the world, there are many philanthropists who need money to do charity. Otherwise, how could they donate and help others? Therefore, do not let images in movies of villains or lawbreakers brainwash you into thinking that wealth is something to fear or disdain. It's not the money itself that makes people bad. Rather, it reveals their true nature. Good people use wealth to do good, benefiting their communities and society. Conversely, those with malicious intent use it for selfish gains. The issue lies not in money but in how we think about and use it. By changing our mindset and using wealth positively and responsibly, we can achieve our goals and dreams, creating prosperity and happiness in our lives. Lesson number five. Wealth is a privilege or a right. The poor often seek a rational reason why they cannot be wealthy. They believe that the rich become wealthy through deception and without scruples. They disdain the wealthy, believing them to be lacking in compassion, selfish, arrogant, and consider the wealthy to be evil and filthy. Conversely, the wealthy believe that becoming rich is everyone's right. They are not afraid of taking risks, ready to embrace challenges, and always seeking to learn and develop themselves. They understand that acquiring wealth requires skills, creative thinking, and a broad vision. They are not confined by traditional boundaries but constantly strive to exceed limits to achieve success. Thus, to change our lives, we need to change our thinking, learn from the wealthy, and apply positive thinking to our daily lives. Believe in yourself, dare to dream and act, to turn dreams into reality. Some think that the wealthy are selfish and arrogant, portraying them as villainous and sordid, often saying things like, money doesn't bring happiness. But with this mindset, how can they become wealthy? Simply put, how can you become someone you dislike? Therefore, only when you change your views about the wealthy can you truly find comfort in becoming wealthy yourself. 
Wealth is an advantage for the rich, bringing freedom and choices for them and their families. With money, you can live a life of freedom, unconstrained compared to ordinary people. The wealthy often admire and respect others who are wealthy, striving to fulfill dreams, believing that if they can make others' lives better and easier, they deserve to be wealthy. Many self-made billionaires started from nothing, but with a mindset of helping others, solving problems, they created value. They believe that the more people they help, the more money they earn, and they deserve the wealth they accumulate. Above are five perspectives on wealth from the book, How Rich People Think. If any of these perspectives have resonated with you, please leave a comment below so we can know. Each comment will be read and sincerely responded to. If you enjoyed this video, please help me by liking and sharing it with others to spread this positive energy, aiding their development alongside yours. Sincere blessings to those who have liked this video. May you find your true path to wealth and live your dream life. If you wish to continue learning from the wealthy and adopt their mindset, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Our goal in creating this channel is to share valuable content that expands your horizons, breaks the cycle of poverty thinking, and even helps you become a millionaire or billionaire, becoming part of the wealthy club. Thank you for your valuable time. Your feedback means a lot to us. Like for yes, dislike for no, it's significant feedback for us. Goodbye, and see you in the next video. Summary of the book, Wishing You Success.